guys, Samantha from Dressing My Tutorials here and today I'm going to be showing you how to condition your clay. Now the conditioning process can be a little different depending on which brand of polymer clay you have. So in this demonstration today I'm going to be using three different brands. I'll be using Primo, Kato Poly Clay and Primo Professional. Now we'll start with the harder brands first because they're a little trickier than the soft brands. So we'll start with Kato, which is typically the hardest brand. Now, if your clay is fairly fresh, so this one's a fresh brand, I'm going to just squeeze it, and you can see that I can move it. If it, if it moves like that, then your clay is fresh, which means that it's, it's, you haven't got old clay, it's supposed to be this texture. But, of course, this is pretty hard, so you're going to want to soften it up a bit. Now, the best way to do that is to pop your clay into a plastic bag and zip up the bag like that and now you can use a mallet but I'm going to be using my solid acrylic roller because it's easier for me to show you in the camera the mallet will take up too much of you but it's best to use a mallet and excuse me this is going to make a little bit of noise but you want to bash this now just like that and then you'll flip it and bash it over and over again. And so I'm going to take this out of the bag. And you don't have if your clay is in a packet like this, you don't have to put it in a bag. The time when you really want to you want to put it in a bag is when you've taken it out of the packet and you've got like half a block left and it's starting to go hard. So if your clay is in a packet, you want to bash it just the same as you did it in the bag but because it's covered with a pla with a packet you can do it outside of the bag and basically you just want to be rolling and bashing the edges of your clay and if it is fresh it will start to move very quickly so you can see that this is already starting to move very quickly then once you're fairly happy with it that it's started to move you'll just open up your packet or open up your bag and take out your piece and so you can already see that this is fairly movable. Now I'll bring over my blade and I'll just take a slice and then I'll show you what it's like to condition by hand. So it's not as soft as Primo by far but it's pretty soft so if you don't have a pasta machine once you've bashed it out and if it's fresh clay you should be easily able to condition it by hand. So you can see that it's not crumbly at all it's just a bit firmer than Prima, but it's holding together very well. So that's how I like to condition my Kato. Now I have a pasta machine, so I'd bring it over to the pasta machine and roll it through. But I just wanted to show you how you did it if you didn't have a pasta machine. So this is pretty good. If you have, um, if your clay is a little bit older, then you're going to have to bash it quite a bit more. Now I have a I have two articles on softening and hardening polymer clay. One of them is how to soften it and one of them is how to harden it. So I'll include those in the links below and it includes more information on how to deal with old clay or how to deal with over soft clay. Now I'll bring over the Fimo Professional. Now because this is a different brand, it's going to have a different texture to the other brands. So Kato if it's fresh, it will tend to hold together very easily when you condition it. Fema Professional, on the other hand, tends to crumble. But once you've worked it together, it will stick together. So this one's in a packet, so I'm going to bash it just the same way as I did with the Kato. And roll up and down its length. And because this one's fresh as well, it will start to move very quickly. Now, of course, if your brand is soft like Prima or Prim or Souffle, you won't have to do this. But with the firmer brands, it's best to do this before you cut it. It just helps warm up the clay, especially if you're working in winter. So I'm in, I'm in mid-winter at the moment, so this is basically the hardest your clay should be. It shouldn't be any harder than this, otherwise you've got old clay. In summer, It'll be much easier. So I'm just going to open this up. Okay. 
and I like to take them out of the packet and then just pop them in a in a plastic bag when I'm done. And I'll take a slice of this one as well. So you can see it looks a bit different compared to the Kato. And now I'm going to start to condition it. So you can see, well, the Kato folded over pretty easily. This one broke. We went through the exact same process, and this is just as fresh as the Kato. But because it's a different brand, you're going to experience different problems. So you can see this one crumbles a lot. So what I like to do before I take it over to the pasta machine is I like to warm it up and get it to stick together first. So this is what you're going to encounter if you're using Fimo Professional. And it's not because the clay is old, it's just because it's got a different texture. So you would carry on rolling over it and conditioning it. And you can do this in the pasta machine, you can do this without the pasta machine. But because it, it's soft, it's not actually straining my hands. It's just that it's got a different texture and so it likes to crumble. But it's pretty soft and it takes it doesn't take too much to get it to form together. So that's already starting to form together. It just takes a bit of warmth and a bit of squishing to get it together. And there we are. That's pretty compacted. And then you take it over to your pasta machine and condition it some more. But that's basically how you'd get it started. And so you can see with the femur, it leaves a lot of residue. So I'll just clean that up. Now I'll bring over the Prima. And this is a fresh block of Prima, so you can see it's much easier to move than the Kato or the Fimo. I'll just open this one up, because we don't need to bash this one. I'll take a slice of this one too. And there, see, I can start to move that with my hands. Now it's all cold, so the Fimo, the Primo is not as soft as it usually is, but it's definitely much softer than the other two. And while this is absolutely great in winter, it can be a problem in summer because it can be it can because it's warm, it can get too soft. But just like the other two, you do have to condition Primo. It doesn't matter how soft your brand is, you always have to condition it. So this one, you can see, is much easier to condition compared to the other two. And that is one of the upsides to Prima. I really like Prima in that aspect. And if you're debating on which clay you want to use, I have an article on which clay brand is best for what, as there is no definitive best brand. And I'll include a link to that in the links below. I've got lots of articles on which brands of polymer clay are best and what their cons and their pros are. So this one was fairly quick to condition. This one's bas basically about ready to use. So that's the Primo. So they're all different. Now conditioning basically so these aren't conditioned. I've gotten them to the point where they're easy for you to move. And so now what you would want to do is you would take them over to your pasta machine and you'd run them through over and over again. So I'm going to bring you over and show you what that looks like. Okay, so here we are at the pasta machine. And this is a typical pasta machine. It's a $20 to $40 machine. So this is one of the cheap ones. It's not a special pasta machine or anything. You can get it at any store. It's really easy to come across so this is a typical pasta machine. Now I'm going to show you what the different brands are like to condition. So this is the Prima. We'll just run it through, fold it over and when you fold it over make sure that when you take it back to the pasta machine you put it fold down into the pasta machine and what this does is it pushes the air out because if you were to put it in like that you'd be pushing the air into the clay and that would cause problems later on. And so you'll condition this about 20 to 30 times through the pasta machine until it's fairly warm. And now you basically condition it the exact same as you would any other brand. You'd run it through 20 to 30 times. And it doesn't matter which brand you use, you do need to do that. So here's the Fima Pro and you can see that it's a bit harder than the Fima, ah, than the Prima. 
you'll run it through just the same. And because we pre pre um, squished it together before we put it through the pasta machine, it's not going to crumble, it's not going to cause problems, it's much easier to use now. So I like to do a little bit of pre-conditioning before I take my clay over to the pasta machine because then it doesn't crumble and cause problems. Because if you were to take your piece straight over to the pasta machine without bashing it and without squishing it together and warming it up, it would crumble. So you do the exact same for the Kato. And the Kato is actually pretty easy to condition when it's fresh. It's got an elastic texture. so. This one is least likely to crumble to the other two if it's fresh. If Kato is not fresh, it's, it's the crumbliest of all the clays. But basically, what the, that's what they should look like. So these ones are conditioned. Now, I want to show you what it's like if you take a crumbly piece of clay and put it through a pasta machine without bashing or conditioning. So I'm going to use Fimo as that example. So I've taken a slice, and this isn't a big slice. If you take big hunks of clay and push it into your pasta machine, you are going to get crumbling and you can damage your pasta machine. So if you're going to put it through your pasta machine, make sure that it's about this thickness or thinner. But we haven't conditioned it, so this is quite hard. I'm going to put it through. So you can see that it's already quite rigid. I'm going to pop it through again. And I'm going to carry on doing this a bit. So you can see that it's flaking and so this will get stuck on your rollers. And because I'm working with fresh brands, it's still not really going to crumble. It takes a lot to get clay to crumble through your pasta machine. It really does have to be old. So if your clay is crumbling through your pasta machine, you probably have old clay. But even the FEMA, which is the crumbliest when you haven't bashed it or conditioned it or anything before you put it through a pasta machine, this one still doesn't really crumble when you take it to a pasta machine. So that's basically the brands that I'm going to be showing. That's the Kato, that's the FEMA, and that's the Prima. So they're all fairly easy to condition. The harder brands need a bit of pre-conditioning before you take it over to a pasta machine. But basically, they all should be like that. If they crumble, you've got a few problems. You sh I suggest looking at my articles that I've listed below, the softening and the hardening article, because sometimes your clay could be too soft, and that's during summer, and sometimes it can be too hard, and that could be because it's cold, or it could be that it's old. So I highly suggest looking at those articles. So anyway, that's how you condition your clay, and I do hope that this was helpful to you. And if it was, please do check the links below as there will be links to more videos like this one. And if you are watching this on YouTube, please check the links below as there will be a link to my website jessimatutorials.com where I have articles and I have places where you can send in your pictures and I have all sorts of things that I'm sure that you'll love. So, I hope to see you around and bye for now.